Bienvenidos and welcome friends. My name is Crossbite and if you are looking for a tool that's going to help you with streamlining your texturing process as well as allowing you to import reference images into Vroy, then you're in the right place. Today we're going to be looking at the XY tool, which is an unofficial plugin for Vroy Studio. The first thing we're going to do to get things set up is go into Steam or wherever you have Vroid Studio. I do recommend using Steam just for convenience. Find your Vroid Studio, right click, go to properties, and local files. And then from here we're going to choose browse. This is going to take you to where your files are. If you know where your files live without doing all that, feel free to get there however you'd like. We do need to know this location because we're going to have to drop some additional files in there. We are of course going to go and get the XY tool from GitHub. I will leave a link in the description for you, for your own convenience. And on the right side of this GitHub page, you will find the latest release. So go ahead and choose the latest version, and just click on the zip to download it. Up at the top here, go ahead and click back to the main page. Scroll down just a little bit. If you'd like, there is an English README. Uh, but I assume you don't want to read, that's why you're watching this video. So we're going to go ahead down here where it says BEP in X. The Vroid XY tool relies on this BEP in X plugin to function. And just in case you're wondering, BEP in X stands for Bepis Injector Extensible, just in case you were curious about that. Up at the top, there is a pre release version. Uh, if you want to use that, feel free to try it out. It does tell you that there's a lot of things that aren't quite compatible. So I'm going to scroll down just a little bit and get the most recent stable version. And once you've found that stable version, Go down here. We're going to find your appropriate system. I'm using an x64 system, so I'll click on that zip. And now we've got both of our zip files that we're going to need. For your own convenience, I do recommend opening up your folder side by side. On the right side here, I have my Vroid Studio folder that we opened earlier. And on the left side here, I have my downloads where I have those two zip files. First thing we're going to do is take the BEP in X zip. I'm going to right click, drag it, and I'm just going to extract it here. Let it do its thing, you're going to see that it's going to add some new files and folders in here. We're going to open the BEP in X folder now. And just to speed up the process a little bit, we're going to right click New and choose Folder. And we're going to name that folder Plugins. If you don't create this folder the first time you open Vroid after installing this, it will create it for you. But just to speed up the process a little bit, we're going to just right click Create Plugins. Now we can right click and drag the Vroid XY tool in here, extract here, and our plugin is ready. So now when we go and we open Vroid Studio, nothing's going to happen on first launch. It's going to build a bunch more files and folders. So you won't see anything on this first launch. So don't worry, don't panic. It's all good. This is totally normal. We're going to go ahead and close back out of Vroid Studio. Let's go back and look at our folders. From our BEP in X folder, you can see there's a few more things in here. What we want to do next is go to the config folder. These two config files are going to be in here, one for the BEP in X and one for the XY tool that we're using. So if you see both of these, you know you're in a good place and everything's going as planned. First thing you need to do is open that BEP in X config, and I know this might seem intimidating, but I promise you it's going to be super easy. Right here where it says hide manager game object, we're going to change that from false to true and we're going to save and then on our other config file here we're going to open this up and we are going to create a few things if you don't want to follow along with me I'll go ahead and do you the favor of dropping all of this in a paste bin and of course I'll link that down in the description for you but if you want to follow along exactly feel free to do these next steps each of these sections has a header which will be in brackets just like the common that's already included and I'm going to tell you what we need to type out here in our first header here, we're going to type camera tool, no space in between camera tool. And underneath that, anti-aliasing equals true. One more line, anti-aliasing level equals eight. If you don't want to have anti-aliasing, of course, you can set this to false. You could also lower this increment from eight to four or two, depending on how low you want your anti-aliasing to be. Our next header is Link Texture Tool. And under Link Texture Tool, we're gonna type Link Texture Directory equals, and we're gonna leave it blank. I'll show you why in just a little bit. We're next gonna type in Use 
base directory equals false. And again, we're going to get into why in just a little bit. And finally, link texture sync interval equals 0 0.2. That number is going to be how quickly the textures are going to sync between when you save them outside of Vroid and when they get imported into Vroid. 0.2 is pretty good. And lastly, your header is going to be video tool, video record, hotkey equals G. Of course, you can change that later as you feel. These are the only things that you need to add. Once again, I have the full file copied down in the description in a paste bin, so you can reference that. It's going to have all the notes included. That's only if you want to mess with it further. If not, this is all you need to get started. We're going to hit file and save. We're going to go back and open up Vroid Studio once again. And now you can see that our plugin is functional. If you'd like, you can change the language here, but I assume most of us are going to want English. There's a few things you can mess with here, but we're just going to hit all the highlights real quick. The, probably the most important things that you're going to want to use with this. So let's go ahead and I'm going to open up my main model here. You can click the header and drag this around where you'd like. If you'd also like, you can hit the tab key on your keyboard and that'll hide the entire plugin. And you can always hit tab to bring it back. Talking about the camera tool real quick. So what you can do with this is you can lock the camera just like you can with a lot of other 3D modeling software such as Blender. And you have all these presets here for quick reference. So if you want to get the front, the body, the back, you know, profiles, whatever's easier for you. And then if you have a pose that you use very often or that you need specifically, you can go ahead and save them to these presets. So I can move this guy around. I click back on zero. We're in that preset. I need this uh, overhead view. Save it as one. And when I'm moving around, I go back hit preset one. So you can set up to nine presets for this to set the perspective yourself if that's something that helps you out. Now we're going to go down to guide. We're going to create guide grid. What that'll do is load in a grid for you. This can be helpful for some people in terms of size, scale, and those types of things. You can toggle this on and off as you'd like. You can also click add a guide image if you'd like to load in your own PNG or JPEG guide image. One final thing I'd like to mention on the guide section here, that while you can add a guide, you can also just add any image you'd like. So, for example, if you have a reference sheet you want to use or a pose that you want to reference, you can go ahead and drop that in. You can see that it's loaded backwards, so what we can do to fix that is we can hit edit. From here you can adjust the rotation, the position, and all of those types of things. So let's go ahead and just flip that around, and now I can use that as my reference sheet. It's in the way, you can move it over, and it'll remain there in the background for you to reference. And when you're done, of course, you can just delete it, or you can hit the little box here to toggle it if you just want to hide it. If you'd like, add another one. You want to load multiple reference sheets in there? You can absolutely do that. Next thing, and probably the most important thing in my opinion, is going to be the link texture. So we're going to go ahead and find a texture. Uh, let's go to the outfit, and just for fun, let's choose pants. Got my pants. On the right side, I'm going to hit edit texture. As soon as I hit edit texture, you can see all of the textures that are associated with the pants loaded in here. So same things that are on the left side here, you'll now see over here. So we're going to click open link texture directory. The reason that we left that blank before is because we want to have this created within the Vroid Studio folder and we'll break it out by each character or model that we're making. So it already took the title of mine, created a folder inside there under link texture, but it's empty. So to put our textures in here, on the right side you hit export texture. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit export texture on all of these. So they're all there. If you want, you could also import. So now all of those textures are here in this folder. The reason that this is such a useful tool is because normally you would have to right click, import, find your thing, bring it in, make changes here. Oh, you want to make other changes? You go back, you right click, you export. It's just a lot of work. So what this is going to do is let you make changes on the fly as long as your textures live in that folder. So as long as your textures are here in the link texture and they're under your model, will be easily accessible and they will update on the fly. So just as an example, we'll open this up in Photoshop so we actually have transparency that works. 
And just to be fun, we'll, uh, we'll put a little smile there. I can save. I can go back to Vroid. And there it is. No importing, exporting necessary. So that's it for the link texture function. There is the pose preset. It is uh, misspelled to perset there, but it is preset. Uh, we're going to skip this for right now. It is just poses, which we have poses in Vroid already. There is the function for loading MMD files, if you want. Uh, you must open Photo Booth to use this tool once you're in the Photo Booth, the pose mode, if you will. We're going to click on MMD, Add Player, and then Load a VMD File. So if you have a motion file, you can navigate to it, open it up, and then you can hit Play. You can also choose to loop if you'd like and your character will move with whatever motion file you've loaded in. We have two more functions to look at here, the video record option and the wireframe option. For video record, you will need to click install first and then restart the software. Once you've restarted the software, we're gonna go up to the little camera to go back to the photo booth. And here you get the option to record. It'll tell you the resolution up here at the top. You can adjust the frame rate and the bit rate here. You can also set the output folder. And as we set in the config file, you can start recording by pressing G, or you can click Start Record. So this will give you the option to record whatever poses and animation you're choosing here. Hit Stop to stop recording. And if we load up the video that we recorded, you can see that it simply records whatever pose and or animation that we were choosing while we were in Vroid Studio. This is pretty CPU intensive, so I don't recommend you using this on a lower end computer. And the last function we're going to look at is wireframe. This is a simple wireframe mode, which you would get in most any 3D program if you want to look at your character in all of their wireframe glory. I do hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give me a thumbs up. If not, give me a thumbs down. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys in the next video. See ya!